Hey, what is going on guys? We're gonna go ahead and start this video off with the giveaway results, so let's get straight into it. I want to say thank you to everyone who entered the giveaway. We ended up having 22 contestants, which is awesome, and it's just a way I want to give back to my subscribers who've been supporting me. So how the winner got chosen was I put everyone's name in an Excel document, and it was paired with a number, 1 through 22. And then I had Google generate a random number, 1 through 22, and... Whatever number that picked that corresponded with the name is who the winner is. And I wanted to record it and show you guys the process, but I wasn't sure if I would get copyright strikes if I was on a website on Google, and I don't know if I can record Excel on YouTube. So I'm just going to tell you guys the results, and here we go. Congratulations to Veznan101, V-E-Z-N-A-N-1-0-1. You should have received mail in Albion Online saying... The different ways we can meet up in game so i can give you the reward but congratulations once again and thank you to everyone who entered the giveaway now obviously i didn't want to make a video just where i announced the winner of the giveaway so i came up with a interesting idea and i wanted to see how it would work and that's exactly what this video is going to be about so what we're going to be doing is taking our hce tanking armor into the arena and seeing how that works out I had no idea if this was going to be viable in the arena and if it's even going to be any helpful, but that's what this video is going to talk about. I wanted to keep this build as close as I could when doing HCEs, so I only changed two things about this build, and the first thing is I swapped out the poison for an energy potion because you run out of energy really quickly in the arena as a tank, and also I changed one of the passives on the helmet to increase our defense instead of keep long crowd control. Other than that, I kept everything the same, so let's see how I did. I would say the start of the match is probably one of the most important parts of it, just because if you have a terrible start, a lot of players can get discouraged and not want to even play anymore if they're that toxic. But can this tank produce a good start? And I would say, clearly as you just saw, it can. These four guys clumped up and I used both of my stuns to punish them, and they immediately break their formation and start running away. So clearly if the enemies are going to group up, this tanking build is going to be very effective against that, which that's not always going to be true, but usually towards the beginning of matches, people tend to stick together and kind of start fighting before the capture points are available. So at least for me, the times that I use it, this tanking build is pretty effective in starting. The only issue I would have is if the team is staying very far apart and they're not getting anywhere near each other, then you can only stun one to two people, which is still effective. But it's not going to be as beneficial for your team as stunning the whole group, obviously. Now, if you're communicating with your group, you can come up with some pretty cool schemes with this build. What we ended up doing was the healer was going to stay here with me, and so was one DPS. And we were basically just going to distract these guys and keep them as close to their spawn as we can. And as you can see, we ended up taking in the middle tower and the top left tower, so their tower. And we end up getting the top right tower as well, and that is probably one of the best starts that you could possibly take on. Even though this isn't a reflection of the build itself, this is definitely one of the things that you could do very easily with this build as long as you're communicating with your teammates. When you're tanking in the arena, one thing you have to take into account is survivability. And this build is definitely going to provide that. So as you can see, the healer and I approached these guys, and that was a really nice stun, just as a side note, but um, as you can see, the healer and I approached these guys, and we kind of just start contesting this point, because we had guys on the two other points, and they were one of the towers was being contested, and they ended up getting the kill for it. But so, as you can see, we're contesting, and we're holding out this tower really well, and obviously I have the healer with me, so in a sense it kind of is cheating. But you'll see that the healer gets wiped out pretty quickly, and I'm able to survive just long enough to hold out until we have more teammates arrive, and they can't capture the tower. So they're getting, like, no points, because, you know, we were able to go and contest this tower until my teammates arrive, and we end up doing some damage, and we actually take the tower, which is pretty awesome. But this build definitely provides you with the tools to be able to distract the enemy team and hold out on a tower because your dodge ability and your D, so your F and your D, you're going to be able to absorb a lot of damage and you're not going to have to really worry about like 
you know, taking on four guys at once. You're going to be able to stun them and keep them occupied and then use your D, your F, and then even your R to decrease the incoming damage to really just take care of all the damage that's going to be throwing at you. So once again, here's another situation where my team is slowly pushing up and we're about to lose the tower, but I rush in here to make sure that we don't lose it and we're able to contest it because obviously you want to take as many towers as possible in this game mode. And as you can see, like it ends up working out perfectly. Not to be cocky or anything, but we're able to push these guys back and it becomes just like these two guys kind of staying on the tower. We end up killing one and then we can easily take care of this last one because they're stunned and they're not able to do too much. But then we get this tower, and the only reason why that was possible is because I was able to use my abilities to be able to push onto the capture zone without taking any damage and getting instantly popped. And finally, this build excels at keeping people in one area. So as you can see, this healer is just kind of messing around over here. I end up stunning him, and it probably wasn't a part of his plan, and we just instantly wipe this guy. So say when someone's running away from you and your group of friends, if they're solo or if there's even just like two of them running away, you definitely can stun them and take them out pretty quickly. Now as you can see, I have to come back to this tower to regenerate my mana, even though it's the end of the game and we already won. I just wanted to show you guys that like, there's going to be multiple times during the match that you'd have to come back and regenerate your mana with this build, and that's probably its biggest downfall. There aren't really any other downfalls besides that one, and if you bring a mana pot to the mana potion, you don't have to really deal with this, but in my first couple matches I wasn't doing that, and I clearly had no mana because of it. Now, you'll see that you'll get quite a lot of assists with this build, but a lot of this is just basically you stunning people and surviving. You're not going to be getting a whole bunch of kills, and if you're really looking for a whole bunch of kills in the arena, then you probably shouldn't be tanking in the arena first off. And second off, like that's not what you're going to be doing here. You're more of a support role, a support tank, while using this build in the arena. So, would I recommend using this build in the arena? I would say yes if you have a team that you know you're willing to talk to and work with. But if you don't have a healer, this build will not work in the arena. And there's been a lot of times where I've been put in the arena and not had a healer, which is kind of frustrating because you shouldn't be signing up as a healer if you're not a healer. But yeah, I would say this build is pretty decent, especially if you know how to use it from doing HCEs and you understand like how the stuns work and everything like that, then this build is definitely viable in the arena. And Instead of, you know, letting your HCE set only be used for HCEs, you can try and use it in something like the arena. Well guys, that basically sums up the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I wanted to say congrats one more time to Resnan for winning the giveaway. And I hope you guys really like the style of this video because I wanted it to be unique and instead of just doing, you know, HCE content, I decided to switch it up for this one and do something that's related to HCEs, but also kind of gives your items that you're going to get in HCEs, you know, a different purpose almost. Alright guys, well that sums it up. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Peace.